Hi class, my name is Haley Granger and I am a senior computer science major at Kennesaw State University with a minor in game design. Today we're going to talk about facial recognition. We're going to go through a facial recognition presentation exploring two different types of recognition and how we use them. And then we're going to do an activity where all of us are going to create our own facial filter. I hope you enjoy the presentation. This is a fun and engaging activity for students and it can be done easily within one class period. Welcome to the presentation on facial recognition by Kennesaw State University. We're going to talk about two major types of facial recognition. The first is facial identification, usually done in government and police work. They use database searching and still photos to do their identification. And the second type is through Instagram, Snapchat, and Facebook filters. And these use live videos. So for facial identification, they usually take a still image that's already been taken, map the eyes, and then convert it to grayscale and crop the image so that the face is the only part of the image that you can see. After that, they map key points of the face, like the nose, the ends of the nose, the lips, the chin, and the cheeks. And then they calculate the distance between all of these key features in order to reconstruct a face. After they do that, they run these distances and these features through a database to see if they can match the distances and the features to an already existing photo. Filters work in close to the same way. So they still map key points on the face and after the points are mapped on the face, lines are drawn between those points. As you can see, there are a lot more lines and distances on the filter than on the facial identification photo. This is because the filters have to use live videos and when you're using a live video, your face is constantly shifting a little bit. So it has to get a better idea of the distances between your eyebrows, the distance between your nose and the end of your nostrils, and the distance between your lips and the bottom of your chin, and many other distances. Um, sometimes it doesn't register your face correctly. So in the first picture, the woman has a lot of moles on her face and on her chest so that the filter thought that her face was down on her chest. And the man in the second picture had a problem with the filter because it got confused because he had glasses on and the refraction from his glasses caused the filter to think that his eyes were somewhere else. Now that we've learned a little bit about facial identification and recognition, we're going to do an activity where we create our own facial filters. Please pause the video during this time if you want to read the activity slide before I go into detail about how to do the activity. You will need several dry erase markers and each student will need two page protectors or um, transparency papers. It is a good idea to write this on the board so that students can understand what they need to be doing if they're doing it with a partner. But this can also be translated to an at-home um, activity. I have here a photo of a girl and we're going to put a, we're going to make our facial filter based on this girl. So what we're going to do is we're going to take one of our transparencies and we're going to lay it over her face. Next, we're going to take a marker and we're going to mark several key features on her face. We're going to mark the middle of the eyebrows, the tip of the nose, 
the top of the forehead, the bottom of the chin, the middle of the cheeks, the corners of the lips. At the end, you should have nine dots. After you do that, you will connect the dots like this, the top of the forehead through the tip of the nose and the bottom of the chin, the eyebrows, the cheeks, the nose, so that you have one vertical line and three horizontal lines. After this is done, you will take the second page protector, put it over the top, and you can create your own facial filter. After you've created your facial filter, you can put it back on the face to see how well you did with mapping the face. As you can see, I did okay. For this activity, students can make as many facial filters as they want. For in-person classes, students use their partner's faces to create the mappings and the facial filters. Thank you for listening to our presentation on facial recognition. I hope that students enjoy the activity and the information presented.